In this lesson, we'll populate our shelf with mail scripts and other tools that will help get our job done faster. Let's first start by adding tools within Maya to our shelf. And then our last step will be to add our custom mail scripts. All right, so we'll hold down Control Shift, head over to Edit, Delete by Type, History. Following that, under Modify, we'll go ahead and add Freeze Transformations. And underneath the same menu, we'll add our Center Pivot tool. Okay, underneath Display, let's say we head over to Nerves and add the CV toggle to our shelf. So we can turn on and off the display of the CVs. Underneath Transform Display, we'll do the same for our Local Rotation Axes tool. And then once we're done with that, we can now start to add our custom scripts. Now, if we were to head over to our script editor, I'll go ahead and just clear everything out. Head over to File, Load Script. Underneath the Scripts folder in your project, notice you'll find the folders and or the scripts and expressions that we'll be using in this course. If we were to go ahead and explore this folder, you won't find anything just yet, not until you switch your your file type filter to all files. Within the folder, what we have is a text document that holds, again, all of our scripts and expressions. So what we'll do is simply copy and paste from this, and we'll also discuss what each of those scripts and expressions do. So let's say we go ahead and cancel this out. I'll minimize the script editor, and I'll go ahead and open up that text document and scroll to the top. So what we find first is our joints on vertices tool. So let's make sure this code is highlighted. We want to highlight from the very first the comment that is our tool label. We'll scroll all the way down until we get to our CLJNT procedure. We'll also grab the semicolon, copy that, minimize, and head over to our script editor and paste. So starting from the top, Again, what we have is a procedure that is used to run the entire tool. What's great about this is that once we run this initially, we can use this procedure to run the tool from the command line if we'd like. So that's what the first line does. The next one is what is used to find or query our selection. And so that we can find the vertices of our selection, we use this flag dash FL which flattens our selection out so we can grab the IDs of our CVs and vertices. Next, we have a for loop that says for all of those CVs and vertices in our selection, that's defined by this variable here. So for all of those components, go ahead and run the following commands within our for loop. So here's the for loop. And then within the for loop, what happens first is that we create clusters on each of those components. The next thing we do is clear out the selection and then create joints for each component. Then we need a way to align those joints to those clusters. So we use a point constraint for that. But we don't want to keep the point constraints. So afterwards, we find the point constraints with the list relatives command, very helpful command for finding nodes Okay, so we go ahead and find those point constraints. And then following that, we delete the point constraints. So they get selected, and then we run the do delete command. The last thing we need to do is delete the clusters. The clusters are only there to snap our joints to. And then following that, we have our procedure for the tool. Again, this is what runs the tool. So rather than adding it to our command line, we can always just add it to the bottom of our code, which I've done in this case. All right, so let's say we go ahead and highlight everything, Control A, and we'll drag it to our shelf with the left mouse button. That way it'll clear out our script editor so we can add a new tool. So we'll choose Mel, head over to our shelf editor under the General tab. That's what we've been adding our tools to. We'll go ahead and scroll all the way to the very bottom We'll rename this tool to, let's say, Joints on Vertices. 
Following that, we can go ahead and give this a tooltip. This creates joints on vertices. And now, let's go ahead and give this a, an icon label just to stay descriptive. As we, as we start to add more mail scripts, it's a good idea to add that label so we know exactly what they do. But things can get confusing very quickly. All right, so we have the tool added. We can now go ahead and save out our shelves. Close out our script editor for now, just to kind of show you how this works. If we were to, let's say, create a polygonal object, it could also be a NURBS object. If we were to go ahead and select a few points and run this, notice we're going to create joints on each of those selected vertices. That looks really neat. But we will not be using that, so let's go ahead and uh, undo the tool. That will clear everything out. We could also delete this object. So again, it works for NURBS and, and polygonal objects. All right, so the next thing, heading back over to our script editor, I'll also open up the, the note file again. If we were to scroll down underneath our join orient tool, we have a rename tool. Let's go ahead and highlight that. Copy it, paste it in the script editor. Starting from the top, we first create a window. The window is named rename it. And then what we do is find our selection. And then we use another for loop that says for all of those objects in our selection, let's go ahead and create a name field. The name field is used to find and edit the name of each object. We also have a button to close out the window. And then the last thing is to create or show the window. All right, so let's say we go ahead and highlight everything. Again, we go ahead and left click and drag to add it to our shelf. It's a mail script, so we'll define it as that. Head over to our shelf editor, scroll all the way down. This is our renamer, so we'll go ahead and rename it to that. The tooltip. Rename objects. Then the icon label, we can just label this RNM to abbreviate it. And choose Save All Shelves. So to kind of show you how this works, let's say if we wanted to rename our creature, well with that selected, we can go ahead and use our rename tool. Here's our creature's name. So if we wanted to rename this to ah uh, whatever. Once we hit enter, notice the name has been stored. But chances are we don't want it renamed to what I've just renamed it to. So I'll go ahead and undo that. Again, everything has been restored back to what it was before. I'll go ahead and close out the window from there. So another very helpful tool. Now the last tool we'll add before we get right in and start building our control rig is a tool that will align objects in position and rotation. So heading back over to our, our text file, we'll scroll down underneath our rename tool and we'll find our match transform tool. And specifically, this matches our position and orientation. So let's go ahead and highlight everything, copy, head over to our script editor, paste. And then from the top, what we have is a heads up message command that basically is a pop-up that gives us our instructions. So first we select the target object and then the source and then run the tool. So again, what this does is it takes the first selection and aligns it to the second selection. So I find that order to be a little bit better. For instance, if we create a locator, that locator of course will be selected. So with it still selected, we would simply shift select the object we like to align it to and then go ahead and run this tool. So at the top, again, we have our heads up message. Following that, we find our selection. And then the next thing we do is use a parent constraint to align the object to the second selection. And then the last thing we do is use the list relatives command, again, to find that parent constraint, and then we delete it. And then we have a, a command at the bottom to select that first selection. All right, so let's go ahead and highlight everything, add this to our shelf. 
We can now close out our script editor, head over to our shelf editor, scroll to the bottom. We'll rename this tool to match position orientation. I'll go ahead and copy this and use that as the tooltip. And then from there, the icon label, we can call this MTT for Match Transform Tool. Then go ahead and save out our shelf. All right, so to kind of show you how this works, if we were to, let's say, create a, a locator, let's say if we were to kind of move it over and kind of reorient it, with it still selected, we can shift select our creature and use the match transform tool. And notice now the locator's position and orientation has been matched to the creature's position and orientation, which essentially sets this locator back to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete the locator. We don't need it just yet. That's basically a majority of the tools and, and mail scripts we'll be using. We'll add extra as needed again so we can work faster. All right, well, with that said, we're ready to now begin building our control rig, which will start in the following lesson.